Hey everybody, my name is Peter Taylor and I'm one of the Rabbit Math guys. If you've looked at our website, rabbitmath.ca, you will see that our objective is to construct a different kind of high school mathematics curriculum. More sophisticated, more artistic, more mathematical, as in real mathematics. We take our model for this from the creative arts and literature. Here, teachers take into their classroom works of art that are of interest to scholars and worthy of their study. And yet, students can also work with these and learn a great deal, and of course also grapple with the technical skills which they will need to move forward in the discipline. Well, we want rabbit math to be like that. Currently, we have prepared a draft grade 11 curriculum, and it is being used by teachers. Let's just have a look. Uh, in, the, in the classroom, parts of it at any rate, grade 11. It has a bunch of, I guess, 16 different um, activities uh, covering the Ontario um, grade 11 uh, technical uh, stuff that you need to know. Um, and, and you should explore these. You're welcome to sort of have a look and, uh, and see what kind of activities they are and try them in your classroom. Um, but uh, right now, I'm interested in grade nine. Um, and there's a few things up in grade nine, um, but here's a, a, but okay. So how did this come about? Well, um, yesterday I had a visit, it was Sunday, from um, four of my grandchildren. And one of them, Roger, is in grade nine. And the others are, are a bit younger. Uh, but his, um, his second uh, eldest is Jack in grade seven. And I thought I'd uh, try um, a problem out on them. So um, I've been talking to Roger about what he's doing in grade nine. And in fact, it's mostly um, graphs of, in terms of, of function graphs, it's mostly straight lines. In fact, it's just about all straight lines. And he's learned um, what the straight line graph is all about and and the interpretation of a slope as a um, rate of change. And it's always seemed to me that it's a great opportunity to work with curves as well, just to enrich your um, understanding of, uh, of slope and, um, and how it can change. And so this little problem here is one that I thought I'd try out on him and see how it went. And um, well, Jack was kind of interested too, so so they they came together, and um, here's what we did. And I'm going to switch over to the um, document camera. So here's the problem. Um, I have a yam, and I want to bake it. Um, so I turn my oven on to 240 degrees. The yam starts at room temperature at 20 degrees, and it's cooked when it reaches 220 degrees. And that takes exactly 10 minutes in the oven. And so I asked Roger, um, what, what does the temperature time graph look like over that 10 minute period? How does the temperature of the yam change from 20 up to 220? Uh, so draw me a graph of what it looks like. And uh, well, I've, had, I've, I've given this kind of problem to students before. And, and sometimes I've kind of got a straight line. Um, and then there's been an argument about why it shouldn't be a straight line. But, but, um, but R Roger uh, uh, kind of drew, after a little bit of thinking, he kind of drew, he drew something like that, a curve. Of course, his job was to explain to Jack what was going on. So he said, well, um, at the beginning, the temperature is increasing fast. So this is early time, and you can see the graph is going up quite quickly. But toward the end, 
it's increasing more slowly. And, and why is that? Well, at, at the beginning, the difference between the temperature of the oven and the temperature of the yam is large, and that means the heat goes in. That means the temperature rises faster, whereas the temperature difference is very small here, so there's um, somehow less, um, uh, less of an increase in temperature, uh, lower rate. So this was kind of his explanation, and Jack seemed to accept it all right. And, um, and so you get this um, concave down curve. And that's actually the curve I want to work with. So, um, so we're off to a good start. Well, um, I have a graph that I want them to work with. So um, I gave it to them then. There it is. Um, starts at 20. Goes to 220, concave down. And this is an interesting graph because it has a lot of lattice points on the way. Um, in fact, a surprising number of them. And you might ask yourself uh, wh how, I find a, how I found a simple equation to produce that graph. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you at the end. OK, so here's the problem. Uh, this is the time temperature time trajectory of the yam in, the, in a conventional oven, but we also have a microwave oven available. And it also can heat the yam from 20 degrees to 220 degrees, and it takes 10 minutes. So it goes from here to here, but it's a different kind of um, oven. And my question to Roger was, what does the microwave graph look like? And um, and, and I told him that the microwave actually generates heat energy from its power, its electrical power, at a constant rate. And so Roger and Jack talked about that for a little bit. And um, they, they, at the end, they said, well, you know, maybe it's, it is one of these um, straight line functions because it seems to be that it's heating up at a constant rate. So, so this is kind of what they drew. And they said, well, maybe that's the microwave graph. So it goes up. And so that's really interesting um, for them to think about that and to do that and to see the two graphs. And Jack actually made a rather interesting observation. He said, well, uh, I'm, I'm wondering why it doesn't sort of go up more, more like this. And I said, oh, what, what, what would cause that? And he said, well, at the beginning, the microwave oven has to heat the oven up itself. And, and uh, that takes power. And so there's not so much for the yam. Well, that, that's really interesting that he would say that. It, it, um, I mean, it's a complicated thing, that phenomenon. And, and I, then I said, well, that's a really good question. In fact, it turns out that the sides of the oven don't actually absorb any microwaves. Uh, and they stay cool throughout the whole process. It, the microwaves just bounce off them. And so it, ultimately, it all goes into the yam. So that means uh, we don't have that heating up necessary. So, but but, it, was, but it, told, it showed me that he was really thinking about the shape of the curve and, um, and how it relates to the uh, rate of temperature increase of the yam. So that's really good. OK, so now here's we've come to the problem. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them this new graph, which has the conventional oven here and the microwave here. And the question now is, um, you can use either method, and you get 10-minute cooking time. Suppose I want to reduce the cooking time, but I'm allowed to use uh, uh, both ovens if I want, um, one at a time, so I could start in one and switch to another and switch back and so forth. Switch back and forth, and the switch is not going to cost me any time, and it's not going to, there, there'll be no loss of heat. Uh, can you figure out a way to reduce the cooking time? And indeed, um, how would you do it to minimize the cooking time? So I let them work on that and talk to one another, and, and they, um, well, it didn't take them very long. They, they figured that. You'd always want to choose the oven with the 
fastest rate of temperature increase, and certainly at the beginning, the conventional oven has, is much better than the microwave because the graph is steeper. And um, well, then they get so that they're about the same, and, and then the conventional oven is, uh, sm has smaller slope, and so you'd want to, som somewhere in here, you'd want to switch to the microwave. So I said, okay, let's, so what you have to do is find the best switch point and then draw the temperature time, overall temperature time trajectory with, with the shortest time. And so, and so they did that. They, they, they actually um, knew that they would want a point here where the um, rate of change, so here they are without even knowing it, working with instantaneous rate of change, where the rate of change of temperature in the conventional oven was the same as the microwave. So it would be a point just like that. And, and then that point, which is just a little bit under three. Um, so what does the temperature of the M look like with this? It goes up in the conventional oven. Here you switch, suddenly switch, bang, it's in the microwave, and then it'll go up like that because the microwave um, increases at that um, constant rate of actually it's 20, um, deg um, 20 degrees per minute uh, slope of that line. And so what's the um, uh, new optimal cooking time? It's, um, well, it's maybe six and three quarters minutes, something like that, a little below seven. So we've taken th more than three minutes off the cooking time by doing that. So, so that's, um, that's really interesting. That, that's really um, good. And they both seem to be on board with that. So just, just to firm up this discussion, I, I went back to the, the graph again and said, OK, um, so you've already told me that in the conventional oven, the graph here is faster than the microwave, and here it's slower. Um, so ca can you actually, um, so here's a point where it's a little faster. That's at t equal 2. Can you tell me exactly how fast the temperature is increasing at this point in the conventional oven. How fast is T going up at this point? And, and so, so I'm looking at instantaneous uh, uh, rate, slope, and so forth. So, so they knew that they'd want to, because they'd worked with the ruler before, they knew that they'd want to position the ruler so it had the same slope as the red curve at that point. So um, they drew something like that. OK, I said, so very good. That's the kind of, so what is, what is the rate of increase at that point? Well, it's the slope of that line. So, so they had to measure the slope of that line. Well, it's on a lattice point, so, so there's a rise over run. So, so they actually managed to do that just fine. There's the run. Well, Jack had never seen uh, that this construction before, this rise over run, but Roger had seen a lot of them. So here's the rise, and it's 3 times 20, which is 60 degrees. And here's the run, which is 2 minutes. So the slope m is 60 over 2, which is um, 30 degrees per minute. And um, well, they're, they're, they're ready for the ideas of calculus, is, is, uh, which I think should start in, needs to start in grade 9, and, and it does in a way, of course. But, but I'm thinking we can do a lot more. And so the reason I'm making this is because I want to, uh, it to get out there and to encourage uh, folks, uh, any teacher with a grade 9 class, to try it out with their class and see, um, see how it works once you're kind of toward the end of your grade nine. Well, actually, it's only the beginning of January. So sometime in January, try this out with your grade nine class. 
uh, the documents you need, the pictures and so forth, are, are on the uh, Rabbit Math website. And so, but now, um, just to wind things up, I'm going to tell you what this nice curve is. Um, it's got lattice points there at, at 0, at 1, at 2, at 4, at 6, and at 10. So what kind of function would do that? Well, here it is. Capital T is a function of little t. It's 20, and then 13, little t, plus 2, over t plus 2. Little, a rational function. That has all those properties. If you put in t equal 2, you get 20, 26 plus 2 is 28, divided by 4, that's 7, times 20 is 140, and there it is. And furthermore, it's got a really nice derivative if you want to check out the slopes. The derivative turns out to be 480 over t plus 2 squared. And if you put in t equal 2, you get 480 over 16, which is um, 30. Um, so there you are. Um, OK, so. Use it and let, let me know what happens. Let me know what you think of this and send me an email and um, tell me um, how you made out. <laughs>